Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. We have an incredibly fascinating tale to share with you. It's a story that spans continents and millennia, connecting one of the most important figures in Christian history to an ancient island nation in the North Atlantic. Yes, we're going to explore the claim that Joseph of Arimathea brought the Holy Grail to Britain. This is a journey shrouded in mystery, myth, and centuries-old tradition. Let's set the stage by introducing our central character. Joseph of Arimathea is a figure mentioned in all four Gospels of the New Testament. He was a wealthy man and a member of the Sanhedrin, the highest court and council in ancient Jerusalem. Most notably, Joseph is remembered as the one who, after Jesus' crucifixion, requested his body from Pontius Pilate to give him a proper burial. He laid Jesus in his own tomb, a sign of his respect and love for Christ. Now, let's introduce the object of our quest, the Holy Grail. The Grail has been described in many ways throughout history, from a simple dish to a stone with miraculous powers, to a chalice used by Jesus Christ at the Last Supper, later said to have caught his blood at the crucifixion. Because of these associations with Jesus, the Holy Grail has long been an object of fascination and intrigue, an emblem of divine grace, and the subject of countless quests, novels, and films. So how did these two, Joseph and the Grail, get connected? Well, during the Middle Ages, a number of legends begin to circulate. The story of Joseph of Arimathea and the Holy Grail became part of Arthurian legend, popularized by authors such as Robert de Boron and Sir Thomas Mallory. In these stories, Joseph is portrayed as a devout follower of Jesus who obtains the Holy Grail at the Last Supper or at the Crucifixion and then takes it to Britain, becoming the country's first Christian missionary. Now, while these stories are evocative and captivating, it's important to note that they are legends, stories shaped and reshaped by generations of storytellers. As far as historians and scholars are concerned, there's no concrete historical evidence that Joseph of Arimathea ever journeyed to Britain, much less that he brought the Holy Grail with him. That said, we shouldn't dismiss these stories out of hand. They emerged from a rich cultural context, and they have had a profound impact on the literature, art, and religious thought of the last several centuries. In exploring these legends, we're doing much more than tracing the supposed journey of a biblical artifact. We're uncovering layers of cultural, religious, and social meaning. The tale of Joseph of Arimathea's journey to Britain likely originated in the medieval period. In the 12th century, the Glastonbury Abbey was suffering from a series of fires and financial difficulties. To attract pilgrims and their donations, the monks of Glastonbury claimed that they had discovered the graves of Joseph of Arimathea and King Arthur. This resulted in a massive influx of visitors and revitalized the abbey. This story was then embellished and incorporated into the Arthurian legends. The story tells us that Joseph, along with several followers, made the dangerous sea voyage to Britain, landing at a place called Weryall Hill, near what is now known as Glastonbury. Exhausted from his journey, Joseph is said to have planted his staff in the ground, and miraculously, it took root, sprouting into the Glastonbury thorn, a type of hawthorn tree that blooms twice a year, including around Christmas. Joseph is said to have established the first Christian church in Britain at Glastonbury. The Glastonbury Abbey, which was a site of Christian worship from at least the 7th century, was later associated with Joseph and his church. In one version of the legend, the Holy Grail was buried in the ground near the church. Its divine influence bubbled up as the Chalice Well, a natural spring renowned for its red-tinted water reminiscent of the sacramental wine of the Eucharist. Whether or not Joseph of Arimathea actually brought the Holy Grail to Britain, these stories have had a lasting impact. They were integral to the mythology of the Knights of the Round Table, inspiring countless quests for the Holy Grail. They contributed to the sacred status of Glastonbury, a site of pilgrimage for many centuries. And they provided a powerful image of faith and perseverance in the face of adversary. 
embodied in the figure of Joseph of Arimathea, the humble disciple who risked everything to spread the word of Jesus Christ. In conclusion, the story of Joseph of Arimathea bringing the Holy Grail to Britain is a complex weave of historical fact, medieval legend, religious symbolism, and national identity. It's a symbol to the power of stories and the enduring fascination with holy relics. While we may never know the true origins or final resting place of the Holy Grail, the quest for it invites us to engage with our history, our myths, and our deepest beliefs in unique and meaningful ways. We hope you enjoyed this exploration into one of the most captivating tales in Christian folklore and invite you to continue to delve into the rich tapestry of human history and spirituality.